We're going to talk hydraulics today. We've come well a long way around the world to actually speak with an expert hydraulic company. This company makes the single point connectors for John Deere products. They also make a, a bunch of products, uh, same single point type deals for Case New Holland and many other ma manufacturers worldwide. Um, since we were coming to Italy because uh, Catrille's just now getting out of her master's program here. Maybe I should back up just a little bit and explain a bit of that. Uh, for those of you who followed our channel for a long time, we have a daughter, Catrille. Uh, she's been in a master's program. Uh, it's a two-year program through Johns Hopkins. Uh, the first year of that has been spent in Bologna, Italy. Her program just completed. So we decided to come over here and take just a little whirlwind trip with her around the country. We've been in Italy about a week now, just long enough to get over the jet lag. And we are in Milan at this point, or very near Milan. And we're visiting with faster couplers. We're excited about this visit. We're gonna meet a couple of guys that work with the company and we're going to learn some more about hydraulics. We're going to see a little bit of manufacturing, but we're also going to learn a couple of items that can help you and that can help me keep from having hydraulic issues in our tractors. Stay tuned. Stefano, you do the quality management for all the faster, right? Worldwide. So question I have for you, what is the biggest quality issue that you face? The first point here is contamination. Uh oh, contamination. Yeah. Dirt. Tell me more. One of the most important point or topic is the external contamination. External. So what is behind the user and the machine. So okay. everything that is can collect on the coupler and it is related to the dirtiness. Oh, okay. So this is when I leave the coupler unplugged. Correct. And dirt collects either on the male or female portion. And then when I go back to plug them in, I just shove it in there. And I yeah. tend to do that. I, I guess I never really worried about it. I thought the filter would take care of it. Yes, correct. It is something that the user are thinking in such a way, but it is really important to take care about the copper condition prior to use that. So mm -hmm. this is really an important user behavior that we need to raise the attention on this topic. Okay, so I suppose I should, number one, use those plugs and the caps. Correct. Right, so when I unplug, I need to put the, the plugs back in. The plugs sometimes break and I just get a little bit lazy, so I don't, I don't really worry about them, but I guess I need to, to redouble my efforts on there. But if I don't put the plug in or the cap on, I've got a couple of suggestions that, that I have seen recently. One is uh, Ken mentioned uh, in a previous episode of potentially using WD-40 uh, as a cleaning solvent. WD-40 doesn't really endorse that, but uh, you know it, it works. Uh, another is using an elect electrical contact cleaner. My John Deere dealer, when uh, they, I, they came out for some service, they used, actually it was a John Deere branded electrical contact cleaner that they sprayed in. Uh, any couplings and all when they were when they were doing some modifications. So that's a couple of suggestions and you might have more in the comments section below. External contamination, dirt getting into the system can cause problems. I assume this is in the O-rings um, and, and right. that type of, of scenario there and the filter just won't catch it all. What other types of contamination might we see? So of course also the internal contamination, what we call it internal, it is something that is already embedded into the process of manufacturing of the oh. coupler. This is important because it's much more related to the small particles. We are okay. speaking about microns in this case. Okay, so you're talking about really small steel particles that are left in the coupler at Correct. the manufacturing stage. Correct. I guess after initial purchase, I can't do much about that. I guess I never really thought about couplers. You, you might say that couplers by different manufacturers, for instance, might be different in the amount of effort they take to get rid of the, such contamination. Well, what do you do? Companies as Pastel is taking contamination seriously along the process of manufacturing. Okay. So uh, we have different step of cleaning of each single component from blowing from automatic system of cleaning into CNC machines during the production or during the lifting of component. Then we can have an industrial washer where okay. 
with the using of specific solvents and ultrasonic, we can clean each single part. Okay. Later on, during the assembly process, of course, we are taking care of each single assembly step in order to prevent any contamination from human point of view, but also in our, we can say, assembly lines. Okay, so you've got a several step process. You use air, you use water. Exactly, solvent, um, ultrasonic cleaning, and the, from the prevention side, of course, our uh, operators are well trained about contamination. Okay, so it, it, it is a major issue. I guess, again, I thought the filter would take care of it, but in this case, you're saying that these steel fragments are so small. Exactly. That they might get through a filter. And then, but they're still large enough to be able to cut an O-ring. Okay, two types of contamination. One is external contamination, which is my fault. And one is internal contamination from the manufacturing process, which is, well, the fault of the manufacturer. So maybe there is a difference in couplers. In any case, keep the dirt out of your system. This doesn't look to be working right. Not exactly. It's not, uh, it's not perfect because, as you can see, there is a continuous drop of oil. Yep. <laughs> I've seen that before. Exactly. So it means that there is a leakage when we are connected. Yep. Probably the problem is uh, a damage of the O-ring that makes sealing between female coupler and male coupler. Okay. So this is probably the uh, O-ring on the female side exactly. that's causing this problem. Exactly. In fact, if you try to disconnect, uh, we should uh, see any more, uh, no any more uh, drops. You see a small amount of oil because it's a normal spillage, and then stop. Okay, so in a recent episode, we just talked about uh, this with Ken from Bolt on Hooks. We talked about a leakage while being connected, like this, is solvable by us, the customer. Uh, a leakage while disconnected, this one doesn't have one, but a leakage while disconnected um, is not really solvable. We, we just have to replace that because it's in the internals of the customer. Hey, I want to introduce you to Roberto a engineering manager here at Faster Couplers. And this is, this is an engineering lab. We're doing all kinds of testing here. Yeah. This machine here allows us to apply up, pressure. Yeah, up to 300 bar and uh, flow. And uh, with this bench, we can test leakage, functionality, uh, resistance of internal seals. And in the test lab, you can test everything of our coupler, internal safety, functionality, robustness, uh, uh, everything. Okay, can we fix this coupler? Yeah, 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 we can. Okay, let's have a look. So John Pierre is going to replace the O-ring exactly. for us. Okay, is, is there a special tool required? I mean, that looks like a dental pick. Exactly, exactly, the same. <laughs> okay, okay, and there's the O-ring right there. I guess we just need to unhook it, right? Yeah. See, this is how we have to do it on the yeah. tractor. We have to exactly. do it horizontal like this. Sometimes it's difficult because the position and uh, it's not so comfortable. Easier is to remove the copper and change, but you can do okay. it. I get the feeling John Pierre has done this a time or two. Yeah, he's an expert on that. Can you come to my house and uh, <laughs> I've got one that needs replacing right now. You can call him and they come immediately. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I can feel it in there. Yeah. Promise no leak this time? Exactly. The couple is under pressure and uh, there is no any more leakage. You see there is no dropping of uh, oil. And it's dry, it's perfect. I'll try to put a link to a dental pick like that at our Amazon store, amazon.com slash shop slash tractor time with Tim. They're not very expensive. We used to be able to pick them up at the dentist. They would have them that they were worn out and not usable anymore. I don't think we can do that anymore, at least in the States, but we used to be able to. However, we can get them, I believe, at Harbor Freight or at our Amazon store, so that, that'll be a good place to find them. You know, while we're here, there's been some, I don't know, just a misunderstanding, I think. When we see these ag couplers like are used on our tractors, a lot of times people see oil kind of come out of them when we connect or disconnect. Exactly. Maybe we could talk a, bit, a little bit about the difference between what we just saw, leakage, yeah. 
and what you would call, I think, spillage. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Because typically, due to the shape of the valve, when you connect and disconnect, there is a small amount of foil that is lost during the connection disconnection. But this is a physical. It's not a problem. It's not a leakage. In fact, when you connect and disconnect, you see a small amount of oil dropping, but then it stops. Okay. There's no continuous dropping. Okay. Continuous dropping means leakage. Okay, it's well let's different. see that. And so when we disconnect here, we're going to see exactly. some spillage. Even though we've already seen there's no leakage. Exactly. So there we go. See? And then a few drops and then... That's it. Stop. Exactly. Different from the previous. It was continuous dropping. So those of you who, um, well, you keep your shop cleaner than mine, this is probably a little bit frustrating. But it's just the way it is. I mean, there's just going to be some spillage with this type of connector. Maybe we could show a different type of connector yeah. that doesn't exhibit the exactly. same spillage. Let's see if let's see if John Pierre can get us hooked up. Yeah. Through the magic of video, we just replaced this coupler. It's amazing how fast it actually happened in real life, but we did just replace it. Now this is called a flat face coupler, right? Exactly. It's a different style coupler. Since it's completely flat, there is no any accumulation of oil during the connection disconnection, so there is no spillage. Okay. You can see one drops after several connection disconnection. That's it. Okay. My viewers are going to ask, why don't we use these everywhere? Two reasons mainly. One, uh, of course, is the cost. It's higher cost. Okay. And uh, the second reason, probably the most important, is is that 99% of the attachment in the agricultural products are already provided by the previous mail, so you have to replace. Both. Okay, just things have to be changed exactly. over. The interchangeability is the main reason why it's so difficult to introduce flat face copper in the agricultural products. Okay, okay, so this just uh, hooks right on here. Yeah. As long as there's no pressure, that's, exactly. that's easy to connect and no leakage whatsoever. Speaking of connecting under pressure. Yeah. Let's go see a test of that. Exactly. Folks, the single most frustrating thing about hydraulics with these couplers is that you can't connect them. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it, it, no matter how hard you try, you can't connect them. We talked about this in a recent video with Ken from Bolt on Hooks, and we talked about a tool that you could use to depress this connector when you have pressure on this line. But I'm going to show you a different solution uh, in this episode. First, I want to show you the red line and the blue line here. Well, the blue line corresponds to the male side of the fitting, you know, blue for boys. Um, the pink line is the female side, and it's over here. Both of these are, are on the same female circuit. And so this is a traditional fitting like we have on our regular tractors, and the male side is under pressure. See the pressure there? And there is nothing I'll be able to do and this is just like it is at home, right? I mean, the only thing different is that most of the viewers are probably uh, screaming and stomping and um, saying words that we don't want to hear at this point. Um, this side over here has a different type of coupler. Tell yeah. me a little bit about this coupler, yeah. Roberto. With this coupler, you can connect with the male under pressure. You, could, you can also connect with the female under pressure or both under pressure. No. Yeah. You mean I can connect this up right now? Yeah, you can. And wow. now we are connected. But it's still under pressure. Exactly, because the main stay closed for safety. Because if you have the attachment with pressure trapped inside with a cylinder, and you connect, the main stay closed and your attachment okay. doesn't move. Let me see if I can visualize that. So. If my loader is in the up position, yeah, exactly. it's under pressure, I connect it here, the loader is not going to come down. Exactly. exactly. Well, how am I going to get it down then? Now you have to pressurize the female up in order to open the mail and then you can move your attachment. Okay, so I'm going to move the lever a little bit exactly. on the, and, and that will apply just a little bit of pressure here. Exactly. Actually, I have to apply a good bit of pressure and when I do that, you open the mail. I open the mail. And then you have the complete functionality of your attachment. John Pierre, can you simulate that for us? You see now we open uh, the, the, the female are, are the same pressure of the male, and now if you reduce the the, the pressure on the on the female, you see 
the pressure goes So now they're now the they're they're truly connected now. Exactly. Okay. No, but I had a fully pressurized line. I plugged it in there. Yeah. It was it was fully connected and then when I moved the the, the joystick a bit you it allowed it to work. You to use your attachment. This is like magic for us tractor owners. Now, there is one problem here. These are half inch connectors yeah. and I need quarter inch connectors. Okay, we can develop that. Right, that's the problem. Right now, they don't offer these in a quarter inch or in three eighths inch. No, yeah, half oh. inch and the next size will be three quarter. Okay, and, and they go on up from there. And the, the point is that there's a lot of technology inside these couplers. Um, it, it looks simple from the outside, but there's a lot of complexity here. And some of it is just hard to get that small. You get all the springs and all the O-rings and everything that small to, to be able to, to, to get this fit for a quarter inch. But I'm trying to get them challenged. Maybe, maybe we can get them convinced to do that. that Get your team on that. Yeah, we will work on that for sure. <laughs> hey, thanks very much for the demonstration. This is, uh, this is incredible. My pleasure. Stefano, you're the application engineering manager and you gave us the tour. Yeah. So we've been really excited to see the tour here. We got to see it start with steel rods and then we got to see this multi-spindle machine. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about what it does. A multi-spindle machine, uh, thanks to more than one utensil, it's few utensils, work simultaneously, drill and make different operations at the same time, so to uh, machine, starting from the drill to machine the components, everything is done very, very quickly. So the setup time is quite long, but then productivity is very high. Yeah, it was very nice. I mean, we could see a, a, a rod of steel go in, and a completed component come out. Now, it might not be a completed coupler because a lot of the couplers we saw had 50s of components anyway yeah. inside them. So these are very complex. They're not, they're not simple, are they? Yeah, that depends on the series. Minimum is, uh, say, eight to 10 components, but we have couplings in our uh, range of products that have up to 60 components. So very, very complex. Okay, and then behind us, actually, you showed us where what you guys call the multifaster yeah. is made. We call it a single point connector. And that's where you have multiple hydraulic hoses at the same time can be connected by, by just pulling a lever or in some cases pushing a button and, and moving. That's made right down here. Yeah, that's where these parts are assembled. The line is not that long. But no. a lot of uh, operations are made in a short space and very quickly, because so our productivity is very high as well. We can make uh, several hundreds of these per day. Uh, we're very excited about this single point connector. It just makes it makes life a lot easier for us. It's flat face fitting, so so we don't have near as much issue with the contamination as, as we saw. It's much easier to clean. It's much easier to connect, given our second segment here that we showed with the connection. Um, just an incredible. Uh, incredible development. Yeah, it's a, a really successful product. You know, we've had an opportunity of a lifetime. Um, uh, Catrille being over here uh, has allowed us to be able to come over to Italy. And then while we're here being able to meet you and, and your team, this is, this is just a, a, a lifetime opportunity for us to be able to see really high technology. I mean, these couplers are so complex, so small, uh, but yet a lot of technology in them. I, I, I really appreciate it. It was our pleasure to meet you and uh, hope to see you soon again uh, here at Faster. Folks, I hope you've enjoyed it as much as we have. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim. Pompeii. We're all listening to our audio guides. Did you know this guy spoke English? Plimey the Elder? Yeah. yeah. Well, no, I'm listening to Plimey the Younger. Oh, Plimey the Younger. Plimey the Elder died. Plimey the Elder died. Plimey the Younger He survived English. It, I guess.